welcome to Mr. Stitch Films podcast, Creepy Corner. I'm your host, Anthony M. Winston. Join me as we venture into the world of horror movies, explore chilling, creepy stories, uncover unsettling urban legends, and share ghostly encounters that will send shivers down your spine. This week's co-host is a lovely, dear friend of mine, Sarah Ellis. Hello. Joining us to share in the frightful fun and get ready to embrace the darkness, let's get creepy. So in this episode, we're sinking our teeth into a subject very close to home. In the dark recess of the woodland stands Darkwood House, a house with decades of unsettling and horrifying mysterious events. Inside, a malevolent entity resides, an entity the children call the Nursery Man. Turn down the lights, brace yourself and step into the unknown with us. This is Mr. Stitch Film's Creepy Corner. And tonight we present Children of Darkwood House. <gasps> dun dun dun! <laughs> so as we have Sarah Ellis with us today, the star of Children of Darkwood House, I thought it would be quite appropriate for us to delve into one of our most ambitious projects, I thought. It is. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> looking back at what we got up to, or what you got up to, in an empty house yeah. that you pretty much decorated from top to toe by yourself, with a little bit of help at the end from moi. Yeah. <laughs> it is incredible. I can't believe what was actually achieved in the end. It's, it's absolutely, like, astounding what what we, and, and not just me, like, we managed to achieve I, i'm so proud of our little film yeah like yeah. for what we managed to put together for that feature compared to say anyone else the money is just like i want to say like because eventually we ended up filming over two years didn't we <laughs> yeah it did take a long time <laughs> yeah compared to what we thought was going to take like i don't know two weeks maybe a week yeah, yeah. Took a couple of weeks yeah it yeah, ended yeah. up taking two years to film because i was so pedantic about it and i think over that two-year period from sponsors and things like that i think like the total budget must have been around five thousand do you think i thought less than that but what i think happened was not having huge budget meant that we were innovating with the yes. ideas weren't we yeah oh absolutely 100 percent. and certainly some of the scenes I think of now and think back like a piece of garden furniture suddenly becomes a like yes Victorian Edwardian era style sofa yeah thanks um, to our executive producer and my father-in-law Lee Tracy yeah yeah that was incredible you wouldn't know that when you look at it would you he did such an amazing job yeah, yeah. because I mean going back pre-nursery man so as I discussed, I think on the first podcast with Sarah Cordes, mm -hmm. was that we filmed the Baylock residence in this property first. Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of background. So I was living in West Bridgeford, Nottingham in the UK. And there was this house that was empty for years and years and years. And I used to drive by it quite frequent. And I always used to say to my husband... I would love to get in that house and film something. That would be amazing because it was a quite a large house, you know. And one day I noticed a for sale sign go up and then a sold sign and then that disappeared. And then there was some security signs that went up to say it was being monitored by this company. So I l reached out to this company and asked if they could put me in contact with the person that bought the property. And they did. And the property was Helen. And Ian and Helen said, I own the property. What do you want? No, she was a lot nicer than that. <laughs> and so I told her my plan. And she was like, well, let's meet up. Because obviously she was very sceptical, which you would be. Mm -hmm. Some random person mm -hmm. reaches mm -hmm. out. And basically, yeah, we met up and looked around the house with her, told her my plans. And she was very happy for me to go in there and film, which was absolutely amazing. And that was the bailout residence. And the house was meant to be torn down very quickly. So we were meant to have gone in there and filmed for the Baylock residence within like two weeks, I think it was. And then the property was still standing a year later. And Lee Tracy, my father-in-law, he said to me, do you think we could 
do another film in there. Mm. And I was mm. like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll ask Helen when she's planning to tear the house down. So she says, oh, well, it's not going to be for a while yet because we're we'll running into some problems. Mm. So I wrote and shot Cry of the Magpie in there. Yeah. So I had to completely redecorate the house to from 1940s to 1970s. And that was your first starring role, wasn't it? it well, was. co-starring role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you hadn't really done any acting before, but you're quite a theatrical person. Yeah, and you'd spotted me because I'd been papped. Yes. Um, uh, for um, a film, a completely separate film, where I'd gone along down to London to see the premiere and literally got papped by the paparazzi. Yeah. And you saw the photograph and went, you'd be really good in my next film. Yeah, I mean, and, and I filmed your burlesque show, so I knew how oh, theatrical. Yeah, yeah. That's where we met was yeah. through that burlesque show, and so and I and I knew how theatrical you could be, and Ooh. I was like, "Have you ever thought about acting?" You're like, "Well, I'll give it a go." Yeah, you know, I'm up for anything. So we filmed Crowd the Magpie, which was yep. so much fun. Yeah, and then Lee said to me again. <laughs> Do you think we could get one more film out of this house? And I was like, I don't know. Let me ask Helen. So that was, we filmed Crowd the Magpie September. Yeah. In 2017. And the house was, was, I was told, was coming down in February 2018. So we were like, right, well, if we can get in in January and film this, great (laughs) stuff. Helen agreed to it. Not a problem. So then I immediately, this was November of 2017, so not even a month later after wrapping Cry of the Magpie, I went in and started decorating the house, Victorian. Yeah. And that went in through to January and was like, oh, I'm not going to get this done in time. So I reached out to Helen and said, yeah, not a problem. The house is probably going like, to come down March, April time mm-hmm. now anyway. Mm-hmm. So like, great. So we pushed the film into the end of February 2018, wasn't it? It was when the beast from the east came. Yeah. So I think that was end of February. Yeah. So through November and December into January, I was working like you wouldn't believe because Lee fell ill. So he couldn't help decorate. Mm-hmm. My, my own father came in to help and do some like woodworking stuff yeah. and built some stuff for us. And I fell incredibly ill because the house was so cold. Like incredible yeah. holes in the windows, yeah, yeah. And I remember I was having a script reading with you and Kelly because Kelly was meant to be the star at the yeah. time, yeah. And we finished the script reading, and I started to find, feel a tickle in my throat, and I started coughing a bit. And we finished the script reading, went home. That night, I fell incredibly ill with the flu, and I am not even exaggerating, flu. Yeah, I was so so ill because it was just being there every day in sub temperatures was just ugh. Anyway, so it got better. Carried on decorating, getting the house ready. Kelly couldn't commit to the part at the time, mm-hmm. so we recast. And, and we're talking recasting like about a week before the filming, wasn't it? It, it was, was quite bit, late. It, was it, it a bit? This was a bit before. So I think we, Kelly kind of f- fell out of the project in January. Okay. I think, like mid January sometime. Right. So it was like, well, we've got a month or so. Anyway, and Becky came on board to play the lead of Marion and then Becky felt very what's the word anxious about being able to pull it off convincingly because of how quickly we were going to film yeah so after about a week of script learning she said I I don't think I'll be able to do this justice I'm going to probably bow out I'm really sorry not Mm -hmm. a problem Mm -hmm. okay so there's somebody else that asked Actually, there was somebody else before Kelly who came to a script reading, but then her dates couldn't, she couldn't do it. I don't even remember yeah, that. She came to a script oh, reading. Mac. Oh, back. And this my was goodness. the first script reading. There was another girl. She came to the script reading. A lovely girl. I can't remember what her name is now. And yeah, so she couldn't commit to the time. So then Kelly came in and then yeah. Becky came in. So yeah, this is at this point, three people had dropped out of playing Mary and Kelly. I was shitting myself. And we are now talking about a week before you week, were scheduled week before. to film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was shitting myself at this yeah. point because we needed someone to start filming because we knew the house was coming down. Sarah says to me, I've managed to take the entire week off work. So if you need me, use me. I didn't click that she was basically saying, if you need me to star in this role, <laughs> I can do it. I can put the time in. Because at this time you were cast as Florence Taylor, the mother. Yep. 
I was like, oh, okay. And then was like, I was, I was just in bits about it. And then you were like, well, I was offering to play Marion Kelly. I was like, what? Oh my God, 100%. <laughs> yes, let's let's run with this, yeah, you know. Yeah. Then Sarah Wynn Cordes came on because she eventually, originally said that she couldn't do it because she didn't have enough time. Mm-hmm. She, she was she was acting in something else, yeah. wasn't she? That transferred to yeah. the West End, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. was that, yeah. So Sarah Wincordy said to me, "If you can get what most of my scenes done on the Monday, I can come back on the Friday and finish off. Great, you know, two days with Sarah Wincordy to get all this done. Wonderful." So we had Ben already. Ben was on from the start. Yeah. The cast ended up getting rounded out. Right before film was commenced, you came and helped me about, um, again, two weeks before when we was discussing you playing Marion, you came and helped with some of the decorating, the painting, things like that. And yeah, so it came to the Monday, decorating hadn't been completed. No. We racked up on that day, like <laughs> raring to go. And I got there early to finish off painting the nursery. And Damon was building that door mm-hmm. for us. And we were probably meant to start filming at, what, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? I think yep. we didn't actually start till about 2. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, everyone got into costume. And, oh, my God, I could get emotional now thinking about it. It was just amazing to see you, Sarah, in costumes, like this Victorian set come to life. We had uh, uh, more people than usual helping because yep. Lee was there. Yeah. We had Demo there helping us. We had Ed there on sound. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ed, honestly, wonderful guy. He's always willing to help where possible, isn't he? Like Absolutely. on sound. Like he yeah. helped us in Magpie, helped me in Baylor. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he's just a wonderful man. Like so friendly. And yeah, so we did this full day of filming, like we were tatered. Like absolutely tatered, <laughs> weren't was, we? Yeah, yeah. And it's so cold in that house. So cold. So this is February and the temperatures were plummeting. There's no central heating. Nope. Because the other thing was as well that whilst decorating, because I didn't want to accidentally get any modern day light switches in shot, I took all plug sockets out. Yeah. All light switches out. So we had no real working electricity except the one room, which was the, the like the living room. Set. Yeah. Yeah. So we had some plugs that we hid. So that was the only room that we could heat because we put some heaters in that room. So then we had to quickly hide them when we filmed in there, didn't we? Like, when you watch the film, if you ever see their breath, that's 100% natural. That's real. It was so cold. I'm going to take it a step back, though, because before I stepped into the role, originally, Marion was supposed to be much younger, wasn't she? Yes. She was a younger yeah. woman. What, yeah. sort of late 20s, early 30s? I am not <laughs> uh, quite in that age group. So by me stepping into the role, you did have to kind of tweak some of what you'd been hoping uh, with the original script yeah. anyway so um well richard was meant to be yeah. a love interest to yeah. marion and, and i vetoed that <laughs> i said maybe he could be my son yes and that's what we actually went with and that's worked quite nicely i think yeah, although I, I would like to say i'm not that old that he could be my son in real life oh not i yeah. just play it yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you're an actor darling I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> 2018 so how old were you in 2018 i, mean, I want to say you you weren't so what am i now i'm just coming up to my 53rd birthday so yeah so you were late 40s yeah yeah stunning lady darling like honestly you you <laughs> just don't look your age oh i love you you're, you're like a fine wine <laughs> that'll be it or is it more like a cheese <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't smell oh well, that, that's good to know that's you shower to know. today at least <laughs> but uh, yeah i mean with the script as well there was so many rewrites that i did as well mm, so whilst decorating mm. i was writing the script because Obviously, I wasn't planning on making this film yet. No. Nope. And it was just because we was like, well, let's film it while we got this location. Because yeah. otherwise we won't be able to make it. And because I'd started writing it years ago. And it was originally set in the 1940s. And, well, early 1940s. Mm, mm. But because I'd done Balak in the house in the 1940s, I wanted to go further back in time. So that's why I then rewrote it to be sort of like a Victorian-esque film. It's yeah. actually its own sort of era. It's yeah, not really. Yeah, yeah. It's a mix between Victorian and Edwardian. Yeah, yeah. So I was writing this whilst decorating as well. And 
I just remember finding it so incredibly difficult. And I think it was more the stress that I had to get this script done. So I kept reaching out to you. You would send me scary photos to inspire me. Yeah, yeah. I think every day you're like, oh, I found this creepy photo. Use this. You know, so that was like spurring me on. And there were so many ideas that I had for the nursery man. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that it kind of, the ideas I kept having come in felt like it was convoluting the story. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't want it overly complicated. I didn't want the nursery man to turn out to be a friendly entity because that was an angle that I went with at yeah, one point. Yeah. That he was taking the children to protect them from their abusive parents. Yeah. But then I was like, well, that's not really scary mm. on a rewatch. It might be the first time you watch it, mm. but then the second time you watch it, you know that he's doing this for good. Yeah. It takes yeah. that scariness away. So I decided to get rid of that. And yeah, it was just constant things to try and get in there to, I don't know, I just didn't want to overcomplicate the story. Yeah. That was the main point because I like haunted house stories that are mm -hmm. quite straightforward mm -hmm. and they're not like, I don't know, just like I said, convoluted basically. Uh, so yeah and then lee said to me is there anywhere that his mum could oh, have a role yeah because june tracy my husband's grandmother and my father-in-law's mother she did a lot of acting back in the 50s uh, probably even earlier than that and she's a wonderful wonderful actor was sorry she passed away now a uh, wonderful actor honestly mm -hmm. and she had a small role in unholy which was filmed in her house and yeah, so Lee was like, can we get her a bit of a meatier role? Mm. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So wrote that, wrote that in as well. So yeah, and then script finished, house finished, we started filming. And then Sarah Wynn Cordes went away and performed on her play. We continued. Then Wednesday, Ben came in to do his scenes. And that was a late one. And that's when the beast from the east it, hit but i have to say we had had a day of hilarity with the filming oh my god i mean god. It, it, obviously kind of the era it's set there isn't a lot of laughs within the movie yeah but but behind the camera oh we god. didn't stop laughing and ben is 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 hysterical he is very very funny yeah so it made it an easy day, didn't yes. it? A long day, but it was. It was. Well, I don't a lot think Ben came until like the evening. No, I don't think he did. Did he? But we could. We were tired. Yeah. Because we have our own problems, so we're tired anyway. Yeah. I've worked like a slog doing all this, so by the time we'd even start filming, I was out for the count. Yeah. Near, near yeah. Enough. Yeah. So three days into filming, we're hysterical as it is. Like we're <laughs> just like we've lost the plot. Yeah. Ben comes along and we're just laughing so, so much. We can't get any work done. And I'm right in thinking that there is an outtakes or blooper yes. reel on, yes. on your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Please watch it because uh, the, the hilarity that was going on during that kept, oh, us, kept us alive, kept us sane. It was brilliant. We, it we'd was lost brilliant. the plot though yeah. that evening. So then Ed had to leave because he had an important meeting, I believe it was the next day. Yeah. So he left earlier than obviously the rest of us because we had to continue filming. He came, comes back in and goes, guys, there's so much snow outside. Yeah. Like, And bless him, he de-iced de our windows, yeah. scraped our cars yeah. before he left yeah. while we filmed. We didn't even know this. No. And then we went out. It was all powered again. Sarah was driving home and yeah. slid the entire length of your road. I did. I was taking Damien home as well. We were actually out on our way home and the gritters were behind us, which was you less saw. helpful than you think. <laughs> um, yeah. And I slid down the entire road. Um, length of my road which was just which terrifying. was terrifying yeah i mean if it hadn't been half past midnight the thought that anybody else would have been pulling out of their drive or anything yeah. else yeah That's, i still remember that very vividly <laughs> and you mentioned it's like it's not safe to go out so we cancelled filming on the thursday yeah wait for the snow to melt and then we continued on the friday and lee picked me up because I was so worried about driving did my little... He? Yeah, he did. He came and picked me up in his 4 before. because my little... I had a little Kia Picanto. I that was not going to get... said something about yeah. picking someone up, and I didn't yeah. think he did. It was oh, me. Oh, <laughs> okay. Bless him. Oh, yeah. I did, honestly did not remember that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So then we, we continued filming on the Friday. 
Yeah. Sarah came back. So we, we managed to get all that done. And then we filmed on the Saturday. Richard Mansfield came and helped us that day. He's another local filmmaker within Nottingham. Oh, gosh, yeah. He helped us on sound that day because Ed couldn't come. Yeah. It was another day with Ben as well. So it was like daytime pretty much sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was really nice. And then after that, we I mean, we had slogged. Even though we filmed six out, five out of six to eight years, mm-hmm. we got a lot done, didn't we, on that first week? We did. We got... Well, I mean, but they were long days. We were, were. We were travelling home well after midnight most yes, days, yeah. weren't we? Yeah. Absolutely tatered. Mm. And then after that, we start, We came back for pickups and stuff. Mm. And then lo and behold, because I was being so pedantic about this, because I kept saying to Sarah, like, I want it to be as best as possible. Yeah. Like this film, I need it to be as best as possible. I would be going home and editing and they'd be like, it doesn't work. This scene doesn't work. We need to reshoot it. Sarah's like, okay, okay. You know, so in, in, back we go. And in this point, like the house demolition keeps getting pushed back and pushed mm-hmm. back and pushed back and pushed back, which helped us no end. But I think if it had come down, we, we would have been forced yeah. to yeah. like have been made do of what we had. And I mean, there's one scene in the film where you... Are getting ready for bed, and you've just had something eerie happen to you, mm-hmm. and you look in the mirror and you see the bed sheet rise. Yep. And you turn around, and the camera goes with you. There's nothing there. You look back in the mirror; it's there. We shot that three or four times. Yeah. And I think three or four different people under that sheet each time <laughs> until that final. I really heard my neck as well because I've got to flick my head round, but and I can't see what you're looking at in the mirror, which is really weird. Yeah. It's not something I'm used to. Not yeah. being an actor professionally, so I'm trying to look and react to something that I can't see, but the camera can see. Yeah. Because the and angle to make cold. sure that I could see you and yeah. the nursery man in the mirror at the same time. Yeah. It had to be angled in a way that obviously you were just looking at nothing. Yeah. You were looking at the back wall <laughs> yeah. in the mirror. Yeah. But I think the but final time we got curve. that was Sarah Wynn called I believe, was under the sheet. I think so. Yeah. 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 Because we had Damo first and then Claire. Then then it was Sarah. So three times. It I'd was forgotten shot. all yeah. of I that. Thought, yeah. yeah. And then... Also, the dollhouse, that was thrown at you. I lost count how many times we had to reshoot that and put the house back together and yeah, throw it at you again yeah. and again. It was like and indestructible it, as well, though, it wasn't was. it? It was. <laughs> For saying it was such a thin sort of craft wood yeah. that it's made out of with some <laughs> hot glue, the thing won't break. That was good. That was so good. And what about the children? Because we had... Um, yeah, we had Imogen. Oh, my goodness, we had... Hannah's daughter. We had Imogen. Yeah. I can't remember what the, was it Jensen? I can't remember what his mum was called. She was a friend of Hannah's, wasn't she? Yes. And it was Jensen, I believe his name was. Yeah. Bless him. Yeah, we had those two that came along on the, I believe that was a Friday evening. Yeah, because Sarah was back and we did some stuff with you and Stella came of, on the Friday. Of course, yeah, because, yeah, you would have had to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, so they stuck around and no, the kids didn't come that day. No, because I remember the kids didn't come until a couple of weeks after when right. Sarah came back by herself. Okay. Uh, because I filmed Sarah a certain way in the nursery and then I kind of had to reshoot her stuff when the kids were there because of where I had to place the children to be in shot, it didn't work out with how I filmed Sarah the first time because right. we kind of filmed some of Sarah's stuff to like intercut the I wasn't children. there when you were doing Sarah's stuff. No, so no, I think you Because you, you did manage to wet her a lot as well. Yes, yes, <laughs> we did. Because she has to run out of the house and it's like a torrential yeah. downpour, basically. <laughs> and remember, like, some of this was midwinter. Yes, yeah. Below freezing yeah. temperatures. Yeah. And she's being doused with water. Yeah. I think what one shot that I took, you can see steam coming off her. Yeah. Of, of the warm water and the, how cold the house was. <laughs> and one thing I always, even now when I lie in bed and I think back on filming, something that always gets me is how creeped out I was in that house when we was filming Nursery Man. Well, I there was f- no light. Yeah. So anything that we did once it had gone dark, and it's winter, so it's going dark early. Yeah. If you had to go upstairs, there was no light. Yeah. And you had to take a torch with you. Yeah. And it's cold and it smelt damp and yeah. it, it had that old house. But sort the of... weird thing was, it's like I never felt scared filming Baylock or right. Magpie yeah. in that house. But when I was filming Nursery Man, it was like something awoke in that house. And I just remember feeling unsettled all the time. Like I hated being there by myself. I remember you saying, because you used to have to do the alarm opposite where the front door was. Yeah. And then 
run to the front door to lock the front door (laughs) and i kid you not kids that are listening one day i was sat there when i was decorating and i had to do this stained glass window so i sat on the sofa because i couldn't be bothered to go home to do it cutting out these colored pieces of plastic Mm -hmm. to stick together and i heard footsteps or something that sounded like footsteps upstairs Mm. and i thought to myself it's just the neighbors then realized oh i'm not at home this is a detached house and the neighbors are quite far apart so i thought you know what I'm creeped out now. I'm going home. <laughs> so I collected up my belongings, acting as though I wasn't scared. Because, you know, when the ghosts know you're scared, they'll play on it. <laughs> and I went to put in the alarm. And as I put in the alarm, next to my ear, I suddenly heard... <sighs> I shit myself and ran from that door. But, but didn't you say at some point in one of the... Um, like there was a... like a, I can't remember, like a little storeroom off the kitchen that yeah. you thought you'd seen a man? But the weird thing was, I know this is going to make me sound crazy. It does. And I am crazy. <laughs> but is. it wasn't like I saw it with my eyes. It was like my inner eye, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking about ghosts. And this was when I was making magpie. I was, oh, I was wallpapering. Right. Okay. I was pasting the wallpaper in the kitchen because it had a long bench. Yeah, yeah. I think it was magpie. I'm trying to think now. Was it magpie? No, I think it could have been nursery man. Mm, yeah. Mm. So anyway, I was wallpapering and... Off the kitchen was this other pantry with this door that was always ajar, but there was the pantry windows were boarded up mm-hmm. and we never used that area, so we never took the boards off. And the door was slightly ajar. And as I walked around the bench where I was pasting, in my head, I saw a man staring back at me from the darkness. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of, it, the image came into my head just randomly. And I was just like, hey, I'm closing that door. And I was always on edge from like one of the, from that moment on. And like Sarah said, because I took all the lights out, if I left plugged in lights upstairs with an extension lead when I had to leave at night when it was dark and it was spooky, I had to go upstairs and turn these plugs off, which just completely put me in pitch black. Yep. So then I had to r- rush my way downstairs. And I, I kid you not, I was scared. But I I mean, I wonder if part of that was the, the script as well. Because it was so. so kind of psychologically scary yeah T- terror terror comes before horror doesn't it and, mm, yeah one of yeah. the same but it also makes me think in Torden days in before Dalton. we had like electricity you can understand how ghosts and uh, you know how your mind plays on we the, said the this though didn't we darkness. because because there was candles being used because you had a uh, willy boy winkle whatever they call it <laughs> Can- wee willy wink that's winky, it. Is it? Wee- yeah we willy winkle whatever it is yeah um like thing that you hold with a candle yeah, on it to, yeah. to, to light your way all yeah. the time and you said you can't see past the flame no no and you see shadows move constantly around you with these candles mm-hmm. and you said didn't you you said no wonder people thought of ghosts so much in these yeah. days because shadows move wherever you go with these candles and you just catch them from your corner of your eye so you kind of think there's been movement but obviously the candle flames flickering and beautiful light yeah yeah i mean there's so many shots i love in that film Mm, like mm. so many Um, and when it was finished i got that glorious comment from midland movers Mm. that said some of the best cinematography he's seen in a a local production considering like you say the budget was I mean, like, what, 0.0001% of anything, yeah. Anything that's classed as low budget in, yeah, like, yeah. film world, really. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, there's this, I, and I did the cinematography myself. Mm-hmm. So proud of what we achieved on that. Yeah. So, just going back, we, obviously, we, we finished all the bulk filming, and then was going back, and obviously, I kept making you refilm stuff, and then... Helen's house was this beautiful house. The person that actually owned this house, she had another house that she, she lived in. It was a big, big, big mansion. It was Incredible. beautiful. Incredible, yeah, yeah. So this was going to be the exterior of Darkwood House, wasn't it? Yeah. So we went there one day and we were filming a lot of the exterior stuff. And a oh, big shout out to Kanina as well, because she came along with Bailey, wasn't it? Yeah. For this horse and trap scenes. And it was quite warm that day. And I said to Sarah, I've got this idea for the ending. So the original ending, which we're going to get into the original mm-hmm, end, scripted mm-hmm. ending. Sarah goes through a mirror 
into mm. the nursery man's world basically and i was thinking of logistics of how to do this and i thought well there's this pond what <laughs> if you are pulled into this pond and you come out of the pond into the nursery man's world because it's a reflection and you know you can fall in it sarah's like okay it's warm let's do that later today one of the last things we film i was like great wonderful anyway so we get to this pond at uh, helen's house and it's stagnant water yeah <laughs> it's really stagnant. it was not the type of pond i was really anticipating <laughs> no well you weren't exactly jazzed about it but you are a good trooper and you said yes so let's do this so anyway so sarah positions herself throws herself in this water comes out drenched algae you name it and i was like okay can we do it again like, okay let's do this again so I wanted to get it from another angle, did it again. I think we did it three times, three yeah, or four times. Yeah. Runs upstairs because Helen wasn't originally going to let us in the house, yeah. which is fair. That's her yeah, house, yeah, you know, yeah. covered in palm water. She was like, you can't continue like that. Go have a shower. So she's like, go have a shower. Bless you. How many days later? You were so ill. Uh, yes, I did get quite poorly from that. But, really? you know... It, I mean, and I, I don't think the shots ever got used, did it, they? It is. Oh, it right. is in the okay. final film. Okay. When I was editing, I said to Sarah, the exterior of the house doesn't match. Yeah. It's too grand. We filmed on a sunny day. It mm-hmm. hasn't got the feeling. Mm-hmm. It's it's not it's not right. We can't, yeah. you know. So we spoke to a good friend of Sarah's. Jonathan Mayevich. John. There we go. I knew John from where I work and I I don't know if I asked him do, you know have you got a bit of spare time would you be interested in helping us build a set and he did have some spare time and he built a set that was the exterior of Darkwood House on land set. that Lee had yeah uh, Lee Tracy and it was incredible I mean and that is what is in the film the film yeah I mean it's so interesting because it is just a front. Yeah. It is like when you go to see the Wild West and it's just like, you know. Struts behind. Yeah. But you look at the front and you look the the f- sort of finished, uh, I can't think of the word. but Facade? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the way you'd painted it and it was, it was amazing. And again, you know, he gave his time um, materials. and materials. So shout out to John because that oh, was awesome. Time. And... He did end up with a little part in the in he the did. film. He did. <laughs> where I'm stood on a painting because John is tall. <laughs> <He is. laughs> and, yes. and we all we had was a painting. So I'm stood wobbling on a painting to do this scene. But I mean, he did yeah. a fantastic job on that set. When we were filming there, because it was in a sort of forest wasn't yeah. it it's in a forest yeah. and we did some night scenes as well exterior night scenes and i was more creeped out then than i was when we actually did the interior filming yeah there was something about being in the woods at but, night. but yeah at night it was very dark yeah uh, you know it was light where we were working but it was yeah. dark and we're doing something that's a little bit spooky and getting your mind turning over yeah yeah i was quite relieved when that filming was finished actually and i don't believe in ghosts and we had a helping hand on one of the days didn't we in the woods we did we had um my son one day yeah uh, he came along and he was smoke whisperer i think <laughs> runner of general runner, yeah yeah he's actually forgotten that he did that now i reminded him thomas my eldest was very interested in kind of films not film studies but um filming editing so i i basically got him to come down for a session um, when we were doing the external filming and he he was creating smoke for us wasn't he he was running around yeah. I think he I mean I know he really enjoyed it he yeah. was a teenager at the time so they don't yeah. really say much about it do they and he has actually gone on to do a digital film editing course at university so I'm yeah. hoping that he can be involved in future um, projects as well that would be cool that really would be yeah um, the other thing was that we have to give a good shout out to is, so when we were planning on reshooting the exterior, uh, we got in contact with Kanina. Yep. But Kanina had to sold her trap. Yeah. And oh, she couldn't help us anymore, but she put into contact with a lovely lady called Teresa. Yeah. And Teresa turned up with these two beautiful big black horses. 
and this beautiful big black trap and yeah so sarah got to ride on that I around the say, estate it looks amazing but it was so uncomfortable yeah, i remember you saying <laughs> I can't thrown in the, around in the olden days that's how you traveled because my goodness it's a proper bone shaker yeah i mean that wasn't a small task either for them was it no. because they had a problem that they couldn't get the horses to the property because it was some slight incline one of the horses mm. laid down so they're worried about that so they, she ended up having to walk the horses all the way up it was chucking it down in rain, wasn't it? It was um, a day of showers. I remember yeah, that. It was yeah. so, which was great stupid. for continuity. <laughs> oh, it was frustrating because in yeah. the in the shot, the trap horse and traps turn up with you and it's raining, mm. and then it cuts you walking towards the house and it's not. No. That wasn't done on a separate day. That was the same day, yeah. literally within yeah. five minutes. Yeah, it was pouring down rain and then it just mm. stopped and cleared up. Yeah. And bright sunshine. And bright sunshine, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, these horses were beautiful. And Teresa was so lovely. I can't remember her friend's name that helped, but oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. They were so incredibly helpful. And I cannot thank them enough. Just mm-hmm. being able to add that extra realism to it. Mm-hmm. And then I think that day, Ben came, didn't he, to do his exterior stuff for the end end? Yes, yes. And then we wrapped filming... And the heavens opened. The heavens opened. Because I remember I was using Lee's seated lawnmower yeah. <laughs> with a trailer on the back to bring the stuff up and down. Yeah, yeah. And Ben came to help me pick the stuff up while you were getting dry inside with uh, Henry. And I was like, jump in the back, I'll take you up. So there's Ben holding on, like, bouncing as he's, like, going <laughs> up the hill. Like, literally bouncing from side to side. And Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so hilarious. But... I'm so grateful that we got to have that exterior built because it added so much. It, uh, yeah, yeah, it did, and and it was interesting to see what you can achieve. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have lent their time. Yes, f- yes, their finances, space, like yeah. somewhere to do these things, the locations, but it to show you what you can bring together. When people are like-minded and yes. enthusiastic about and a project. And they want to help. Yeah, yeah. Like some people that just aren't in it for like, well, what can I get out of this? Some people are literally during this production going, how can I help? Yeah, yeah. Like you managed to get in contact with Oliver, didn't you, for us? And let, he said we could film your, well, Marion's house in his yeah. house. And we didn't even know him. Yeah, yeah. And he's an enthusiast of the era, so a lot of it, the stuff in his house are Victorian. Yeah, and so knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness. You know, you say these things and I suddenly think, oh, yeah, I remember that now. I remember doing that. I remember doing this. I mean, to be fair, it was a bit back. Yeah. There's a lot of water flowed now. under the bridge since oh, then. Not but kidding. Yeah. Because you put the call out on Facebook, didn't you? And he wasn't very big on Facebook or anything. But was it his daughter that reached out first? Do you know, I cannot remember. I cannot remember. But on Facebook, I'm I'm a part of groups of, you know, the areas around where I You've live. You've got your fingers and, in a lot of pies on Facebook. Uh, my pies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was it was a really interesting house, wasn't it? Because it yeah. genuinely, he was trying to recreate that kind of Victorian feel. Yeah. I mean, I was told in his last house that he lived in many years ago, mm. he reinstalled gas lights. Yeah. And I remember meeting someone he knew and was like, yeah, not many people do that. But Oliver, he is one to do it. <laughs> Bless yeah. him. So he turned to the premier and he was like, hi, how you doing? I was like, hi, who are you? <laughs> and then it clicked. I was like, oh, you're Oliver. God. And I'm awful. Sometimes if I see if I see you in one setting and then I, and then I don't really know you very well. Yeah. And I see you in another setting. Yeah. You look completely different to me. You might as well be a different yeah. sex. Like, honestly. I used to say that in my work, like, when I used to work in a pub, people sat down and I'd serve them for, like, three hours. I'd stand up and say, bad. I'd be like, who are you? And you look different standing up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That, that house was wonderful. And then we had Fiona come back and she helped being a maid. Yeah. And fun fact with Fiona, every film she's been in of mine, she's always worn that black dress. Has she? Every time. She was in the Baylock Residence, the original black and white one. She wore that dress. That's the first thing we filmed in. She was in The Witching Hour at the beginning. She wore that black dress. She was in This as the maid. She wore that black dress. Is that is that part of the process? You look Apparently at now what it she is. can wear. Right, we're going to give you a part that you can only wear that black dress. Yeah. I can remember that because she took... One of her children, was Magnus, it one of her children? Yeah, the youngest one, be... tiny little one. Yeah. 
Because um, he was going to be in the film. Like, I'd written mm, a script for him. And he, mm. We woke up that morning, we, as children do. No, I don't want to do it. I'm shy. And it was fine. But he, bless him, he shouted action and cut, didn't he, Yeah, for us. he got involved and, and he was very sweet. Yeah, yeah. But he was scared of the house. Yeah, he was a bit unnerved. He was a bit scared, yeah. And he took to you, didn't he? He did. Uh, so I needed the toilet, popped up to the <laughs> loo, and he came with me because he was a bit scared and, and I was just like, okay. If you only got your in the toilet with me. <laughs> and he was chattering away like, you know, this is perfectly normal. Yeah. So and being a mum myself, you know, innocent, it is perfectly innocent normal. Innocent children that yeah, literally have him. no concept of no. personal space. <laughs> And yeah, bless him. He was he was so sweet. Like he would shout cut mm-hmm. and action. I'd go, like, yeah. oh, there, Magnus. He would shout action. That was another funny day because you had the combination of Ben and Fiona oh who just bounced off each other. Big time. So, I mean, both of us were in hysterics a lot of the time. Fiona was not we? meant to have that London accent, but was pissing about and she started doing it and I was in hysterics. I was like, please play the mood yeah. like that. Yeah. So she kind of added a slight comic relief to the film, didn't yes. she? Yes, yeah. Like in those moments, because there was more scenes with oh, Fiona. Sir. <laughs> oh, sure. How do you do it, miss? It gives me the willies. Yeah. It was one of her lines. I ended up having to cut quite a bit of her stuff out just yeah. because of runtime, basically. Yeah. Uh, so she didn't actually end up with as much screen time, but she absolutely hysterical. Like, honestly, wetting ourselves that whole day with both of those together. Yeah, we need to get, we need to do something else with, with that combination. Cause... Well, do you remember the... Um, table you literally posted this clip the other day on facebook and said how much it makes you laugh with them yeah yeah so one of the outtakes which we have i'm i don't even that probably made the real the outtakes real oh, didn't 100%, it yeah. uh, was a scene that involved myself and ben and i'm sat at the table looking all kind of thoughtful Stoic and, and yes like just a victorian ish woman and my son walks in goes to pick the chair to move it so he can sit down and the back of the chair came off in his hand and he's just like um <laughs> right well um okay <laughs> and i think it was it was his reaction to it as much as it wasn't like massively broken but the hu- i mean yeah we that, that and the giant yeah. spider that was behind you <gasps> there was the there was um and i had to get down there and i was like i can't get here there's a giant <laughs> spider I don't know where it, but I think it wandered off, didn't it? I think so, yeah. And I just, because I had to get in the corner to film yeah. your angle, well, Ben's angle from behind you. Yeah. Oh my Lord, that bloody, it was huge. It was like yeah. a trainee tarantula. <laughs> trainee tarantula. It yeah. was. Oh my goodness, yeah. And I mean, at this point now, like we were, we were closing in big time, weren't we, on mm, finishing? Mm, and mm. then we ended up going to the Bell in Nottingham, and that was the interior kind yeah. of for a house. And and fun fact, Becky, who was originally supposed to play Marion, came in to be the psychic. Yeah. Which, bless her, honestly, Becky was supposed to have come that morning to be a morning mother. But then the person who was going to play the medium mm-hmm. was like, I don't know, was like, is she going to turn up? Is she not going to turn up? Mm-hmm. We just didn't know, did mm-hmm. we? Mm-hmm. And then it was got to the point where we were like, she's not coming. And I said to Becky, I was like, could you swap roles mm-hmm. and play the medium? And obviously we'll just cut the mother's lines. Yeah. And she's like, okay. So she took the script, walked away, and she was like, within half an hour, memorising those lines. And, and we had to we had to be done within a certain time because yes. the pub opened. Yes. So we had to get these shots in. Yeah. And it's, uh, it is a Victorian pub, isn't it? It, go, it was kind of, is it older it's than that? It's much older than so Victorian. Like, in the centre of Nottingham yeah. City. Yeah. I want to say it's probably even 1500, something like that. Really? Yeah, it's you really could kind old. of tell it's, it's like higgledy piggledy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we caught a ghost on the footage that Lee was filming. That was a different day we went back for filming. But oh, yeah. No, mm. yeah. So we wrapped filming with Becky and I forgot the two guys' names. Alex Doddy was in it as the reporter. And I can't remember what the other guy's name was. Bless. Oh, that was they good. were both very good. Yeah, they were. They were. And so we finished and then. Sarah Cordes came that day because we decided to add a scene with her where you first meet. So we were filming on the stairs, but the fans kicked in for all of the equipment. And it was so loud. I was like, we can't film this. This is going to be unusable. So we tried a different spot and the noise from downstairs was too much because the patrons started to come in. So we decided to come back uh, on an early before everything sort of kicked off. And whilst you and Sarah were learning your lines... Lee was filming behind the scenes and there's this weird 
anomaly that drifts down from the ceiling up to about halfway up the shot and then just shoots across the screen left. Do you not uh, remember this? No, I don't. I don't. And it's so strange because it's it's very strange because it's kind of got a bit of a shape to it, oh. which is very strange. And if it was just a piece of fluff floating down, the way it then suddenly changed direction and moves off screen is very peculiar. And they're supposed to be very haunted, this pub, because of how mm, old. Mm, mm. And so, yeah, we, we filmed that. But then eventually we had to dub it anyway because the fans kicked in. <laughs> and it was so, so noisy on the audio. Yeah. So we, you and Sarah had to come and dub that hat. And so, yeah, that, that again, wonderful scene. I love that scene so much. Like the, the wood panelling behind you, mm. the, the way you bounce off each other. I had other ideas as to how I wanted that scene to flow, but I didn't have my gimbal at the time. So it was had to be very kind of locked off cameras, which was fine. It's not a problem. It was one of my favourite costumes as well, the one that I was wearing in that. I'm trying to think which one it was. I think was. it was. it the blue one? I'm trying to think that. I can't. Yes. Oh, yes. Because you wear that again in a dream sequence. Yeah. In, yeah. When, when, um, I really love that costume. It is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it really, really mm. was. I wish we'd had that before. Because I only bought that for that scene, yeah, yeah. I think it was. I don't even think it was for me, was it? It was probably, possibly for the other role. I'm not sure. Yeah, role. Like, po- it's yeah. possible. Anyway. It's possible. But yeah, it did look amazing on you, though. And we ended up getting you as well, your signature red look as well. Because I called the house while I was just going back a bit. Um, you had that cashmere um, yeah, sh- yeah, shawl thing. Yeah. And it made me laugh because it's like magpie with your red cardigan, which is what got you the role kind of yeah. thing, wasn't it? No, you had the red coat. Yeah, I did, yeah. But you also had like a red cardigan. So red's definitely your colour. Yeah. And we were quite cheeky with other locations as well, yes. weren't we? It was a case of just going in asking. and asking nicely, yeah. please, would it be possible? And we got yeses, didn't yeah. we? Um, Where was the other one? Other so one? we we did the oh Langer Hall. Langer Hall. Oh my god! I completely forgot about Langer Hall. Stunning! So, it's oh. a hotel, isn't it? Yeah, Ho- but it's like a hotel old. dining as well. Fine yeah, dining. Yeah, which is where we filmed with June. Yeah, and Sarah. And, yeah, and Sarah. We would finish filming with, or we went to see Helen's house or something, didn't yeah. we? And then we was like, shall we go and be cheeky? Because Helen's like, go and ask, go and ask, you know, because we needed this other location. And basically like, yeah, no problem. They put us up in one of the rooms for free. We yeah. didn't stay there, obviously, but yeah. it was for the yeah. costumes and stuff. Not a problem, free. There's like, as long as you mention us on social media, not a problem. And we ended up going back twice. Yeah, yeah. And each time so accommodating to yeah. us. Didn't charge us anything. We had to go early and finish before they opened. Yeah. And we got some hilarious photos of you and Sarah in there. Yeah. <laughs> but a really touching scene with June oh. as well. Really. I mean, there was a lot more scripted for me in that scene. And she just was just so good at what she was doing. It didn't need it. It didn't yeah. need me t- to kind of to say my bit she was she was just so she was so immersed in what she was kind of saying and well i had to put some makeup on her didn't i Mm. so i said shall we just run the lines Mm. like normally when you're running lines if anyone's not aware you do it so monotone because you're just making sure that the director or whoever just knows that you know your lines yeah so i was like do you want to run your lines and june obviously being 90 has never really done film before except with me so twice with me and so I don't think she really understood what I was asking. And so while I'm doing this makeup on her and she just goes full blown into it, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. And you turn at me at one point and go, wow. Like, And she wow. looked amazing. The, again, the costume, which was yes. from... Community Wardrobe in Community Nottingham. Community Wardrobe. I don't know if Community Wardrobe is still going, is it? I'm not sure. I did think of this the other day. I wonder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the room as well was stunning just it was perfect wasn't yeah. it and there was a graveyard outside yeah literally right outside a the window. really old graveyard yeah um, well the funny thing was as well with language is when we did sarah's scenes we was on the back of this room behind this room and that was like sarah's accommodation that her character was staying in because obviously she couldn't stay at the house any longer yeah. and then june's character emma mcdonald this extra room was now her house yeah but because of how different the rooms were yeah, we yeah. got t- a two for one so there was langer hall yeah and then we went to bestwood lodge hotel Again, is it called bestwood lodge yeah, hotel yeah 
And again, they just said, as long as you mention us. Another beautiful... Now, I think, if I'm right, that was given to the mistress of a king at some oh. point. Is it Nell Gwynn was the oh. mistress? I'm sure there's a backstory to it. Right. gothic Look looking. Yes. And again, they let us in that room. Yeah. With the turret outside the window. Yeah. For Sarah to jump off. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah wouldn't call us that is. Not that she actually did, but... Yeah, and I get, I, and g- there was gravel, um, which makes a fabulous noise as you teeter around on it. But when you're in heels, it's actually really hard to run yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, could you just run towards the camera? Oh, yeah, I'll just do that in this long skirt and high-heeled Victorian boots on yeah. gravel. No problem. <laughs> yeah, but another fantastic day. Ed came yeah. to help on sound and stuff. Yeah. And I don't think any of the sound was used because there was a problem with the audio and it didn't actually record. Uh, so everyone had to dub. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally going from pillar to post like with Roger and then Karen and then got you to do some things out in the garden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's quite a few bits of dubbing uh, in this uh, film. Yeah. Dubbing is a whole new experience oh, for me. Is. And I tend to ve- veer off script a lot so it's a lot harder to try you have to listen back write down what i said and then but it's hard because you you're not just reading are you though you have to act it at the same yeah. time as well concentrating to make sure you get it in time but you're not reacting to what you were doing as an actual shot which yeah. is a lot easier yeah. i've got every respect for the actors that do the voice work yeah. you know animations or dubbing for whatever yeah. but yeah 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 so i think like langer might no it, it was the facade was like with sarah i think because yeah so basically after all we did all these uh we i filmed with sarah at the facade uh sarah and mm, cordis with the mm. rain and that was officially i believe was the last thing and it was all in the can then and then it was a slog of editing for quite a long time. And then COVID mm-hmm. hit. So that postponed the premiere. So the the um, the premiere went down like an absolute treat. Like on a, uh, like everyone seemed to really, really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, which was great because there was a lot of work and a lot of people helped out, which I'm eternally grateful for. Then it goes into the sadness. So since the film was made, two of the actors within the film have since passed away. Yeah. That yeah. was June Tracy and Roger Not Fail, sadly. Mm, he suddenly mm. passed away. He played the doctor, didn't yes. he? The psychiatrist. Yeah. Was it a psychiatrist? Or yeah, the doctor person? Yeah. 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 Very good. Very yeah. good. Uh, yeah. And then my grandfather passed away, so he never got to see the final product. Mm. And Elsie and Martinez Ginsburg, who was one of the executive producers and a friend of mine, mm. she sadly lost her battle with cancer and she passed away. So the end credits ended up being an an in memorial isn't it for like yeah that's there forever isn't it those people are on that film yeah out there in the big wide world yeah forever yeah the ripples of their lives sort of thing yeah and it was it was honestly such a slog of a film to me Mm, not not mm. slog's the wrong word to use because I enjoyed pretty much every moment of making that film we did talk about whether or not it was cursed didn't we oh 100% cursed that because there just seemed to be one thing after another. And and again, as a sceptic, I don't believe in things like that, but there is an element of going, what else could go wrong with this? Yeah. Um, Honestly, that film is 100% cursed. Yeah. 100% cursed. So, and, and something I also want to delve into in case people were wondering was that the original title for the film was The Nursery Man. Yes. And I decided, like, everyone liked the title. I, I even like the title. Mm, I still mm. refer to it as The Nursery Man. Mm, mm. But I thought, from a promotional standpoint, I wanted it to be a very searchable name. Yeah. And there were so many films that around, like, The Bye Bye Man, The Midnight Man. You know, there were yeah. so many of them. Yeah. Slender Man. And I thought to myself, it's just going to get lost in the sea of man films. So I was like, what? title can we have that's a good searchable title that's not going to get lost and mm-hmm. that's when i came up with children of darkwood house mm-hmm. and i think it adds an air of mystery so you're not quite 100 percent sure what it's about yeah but there's a feel to but it but just even the name darkwood yeah it kind of which actually the facade that was in the middle of the woods that's it just it suited it didn't Hunt, it, it just, tea, yeah and it was dark in that wood and it was a bit creepy and yeah yeah 
Yeah, so I think it, it definitely has served well having that tower because it is a searchable film now online and it's done incredibly well. It has, yeah. For, for, yeah. for what us little amateur people put together and created. And the other thing was that I want to praise you, Sarah, on, and I've said this to you so many times, is... And I don't, and I don't, I don't want this to come across like I'm shitting on any other actor. Yeah. There were obviously three people that dropped out playing Marion. Yeah. After having a week of filming with you for this role, I can honestly say I could not see another person playing that role. You did say that, didn't you? Afterwards, you suited yeah. the part so much, down to such small nuances in the way that you said lines or mm. you just kind of created that character mm. um, and and again i don't I, I don't want to shit on you for this but i look at say magpie yeah i could see margaret potentially being played by somebody else yeah not that you yeah. can do a good job because you did a fantastic job yeah 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 right? but this i just fantastic there how was fantastic there was, you were but i i mean i would throw that back and say an actor works with the material that they're given and the material was so good that I was able to, you know, channel that. And it was a great role. You always write really strong roles for, for females. It it was, it wasn't, it didn't feel like it was a hard thing to do. It didn't feel like I was really pushing myself out of a comfort zone to do it. But maybe th- that shows that it was just You were so kind of, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. In it. And- yeah. I don't think I would feel the same about the film if there had been another person playing that role. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Because you were very convinced initially it was a young yes. woman yeah. playing the role of Marion. But I don't know, maybe uh, maybe my feeling is I'm very, I look very different now. I've got kind of white hair now. <laughs> I've aged in the last few years, darlings. But... I think bit, maybe having that older woman, you just felt a bit more that there was... Like, she'd lived a bit of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. She'd been through her own trauma. There was something leading upon. the film. Yeah, yeah. So there was something leading the film into the changes that we made. Yeah, yeah. Saying that now has given me the perfect segue... Okay. ...into the ending. Okay, the so original ending. The original scripted ending was very, very different to the ending that was shot because we shot two endings and the first ending that i shot was fine but i felt it was a bit anticlimactic in how the film finished Mm -hmm. and it was a bit confusing i think as well that was the other thing is i felt it might have been a bit confusing so we shot this other ending which is what we had which is now in the film and a few people have said online that they don't particularly like the ending because it hasn't got a conclusion, mm-hmm. which I can understand mm-hmm. completely. Mm-hmm. I can sympathise with that. So I thought to round out the podcast, mm. even though we have gone over our time, but screw it. Me and Sarah are going to read the original ending mm-hmm. that no one outside of the crew has had or heard before. So, And there were genuine reasons that... We Production reasons yes. so, that we couldn't do this. So basically the biggest problem was, because my dad built the stairs that lead up to the attic, because it was meant to be an open attic that you walk into. But the problem but the problem was that we couldn't get an opened attic that you would find in old houses. You know, you'd have like their own stairs that lead up from a room. We couldn't uh, find the right location. So that's what forced us into having to rewrite it basically Mm -hmm. but we have the script so if you've got a good imagination bear with us while we uh take your little journey i will read in the other characters sarah's going to read in marion as if she was marion if she can remember how to do marion i've got to channel my marion this takes this scene takes place after marion goes to find out some details from florence And turns out that Florence has since died. So she comes back to Darkwood House. So, scene 11, interior, Florence's house. Marion storms through the front door. I am not playing games anymore, children. Tell me what I need to do. How can I stop this? What do I need to do? 
Florence told me I need to protect you. I need to return what was moved. Realisation. We hear a door open upstairs and Marion walks up to see the attic door open. Marion walks up the stairs to see the cracked mirror propped up against the wall. Marion takes it. We cut to a nail being knocked into the wall and Marion hangs the mirror over the scorched oval, then stands back. Marion wipes sweat from her forehead and coughs. <coughs> what now? Marion touches the glass, but it doesn't move. It's glass. Marion touches it harder. All right, all right. I need to think. I'm missing something. Marion walks around the nursery trying to think. My dream. What was I doing? Marion stops and peers into the mirror. Listen, children. No need to fear. Of the nursery man should he appear. Close your eyes and count to ten. Only then you'll be safe again. Marion touches the mirror. Nothing. Time is running out. Tell me what I need to do. Marion is looking in the mirror when a figure falls from the ceiling behind her. Marion screams and turns around, knocking the mirror off the wall and glass smashes. Oh, no! No, 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 no! Marion picks up the frame and puts it back on the wall. Most of the glass is on the floor except for a large piece still wedged in the frame. A word is written on the back of the mirror. It's obstructed by the glass. Marion tries to pull it out, but it won't budge. She grabs a wooden block, shields her eyes, and hits the glass, breaking it away. Marion looks back to the words, Moore's attendee. Moore's attendee? The door slams shut. Marion jumps and looks at the door, then back to the mirror, which is now black. Marion touches the mirror, and her hand goes through it like water. Marion pushes herself through it. Cut to. Marion re-emerges in the nursery. Everything is reversed. We hear a child cry out. Children? Marion opens the nursery and gasps. We pan away to reveal several figures covered by sheets. They're scattered on the landing, one to the left, one to the right, creating a path. Children? Marion walks towards, cautiously sidestepping the first figure, closing her eyes as she does. There's not much room to manoeuvre. Once Marion has passed the first figure, the sheet falls to the floor. Marion gasps and turns around. The end figure moves, its head to the side and back again. Marion turns back and walks around the next figure. Once again, as she passes it, the sheet falls to the floor. Marion repeats this process until she passes the final figure and steps down onto the stairs. Marion realises the sheet hasn't collapsed this time and turns back and stands in front of it. With a trembling hand, Marion reaches out to grab the sheet. A child's whimper downstairs makes her turn with her hand poised in front of the figure. The figure lifts her hand under the sheet and grabs Marion's wrist. Marion turns back and the sheet is moving slightly, but there's no raised hand. Marion swallows hard and grabs the sheet and quickly pulls it away to reveal emptiness. Suddenly, all the other sheets rise again in front of her, conveying a figure once again. Marion backs into a door, startled, still holding the final sheet. Each figure in front of her moves its head and Marion gasps in horror. She feels something tug her hand and looks down, nothing. A face contorted in pain suddenly pushes through the sheet in her hands. Marion screams and drops the sheet and runs down the stairs. We hear heavy footsteps begin to follow Marion down the stairs. Marion stops and looks back up the stairs, then closes her eyes. Listen, children, no need to fear. Of the nursery man should he appear. Close your eyes and count to ten. Only then you'll be safe again. The footsteps stop and Marion reopens her eyes. Jonathan, is he gone? Marion startles and looks around and sees a little boy peeping out the basement door. I believe so, for now. What is your name? Jonathan. Marion smiles. Come out. Jonathan shakes his head. Please, do not be afraid. I I'm not afraid of you. We do not have long. Quickly, I will take you home. He will not let us leave. We belong to him now. No, you belong with your parents. You do not belong here. Jonathan opens the door wider and steps out and Marion takes him in her arms and hugs him. Where are your sisters? Hiding, like we should be. I will not let anything happen to you. Show me where they are. Jonathan lifts a finger to his lips. Shh. Then walks ahead and they enter the parlour. Amelia, where are you? Amelia is hiding under the settee. She crawls out and runs over, hugging her brother. Who is she? 
My name is Marion. I came here to find you and bring you home. How did you find us? It has not been easy, but I'm here now. Are there other children? Yes. Where? In the attic. He like he likes to hide in there. We must go. Hurry. Jonathan and Amelia lead the way up the stairs, and Marion lingers behind, making sure nothing follows them. Children, wait. Where is Harriet? Jonathan looks to Amelia. In the nursery. Come now. We must get her. They get to the landing and the children stop. They look scared, looking towards the nursery. What is it? Marion looks towards the nursery. Our rocking chair is moving. We can't see it as the door is partially closed. As it rears back, it appears briefly and disappears behind the door. Someone is sitting in it. I'm scared. Do not be scared, children. The rocking chair stops and we hear the creak of someone getting out of the chair. Jonathan. Amelia grabs Jonathan's hand. Fingers appear from behind the door, gripping the frame. A head appears and the entity pushes itself out from behind the door and stands staring at them. Miss, we should hide. Go upstairs and find the others. I shall get Harriet. But... Go, now! The children open the attic door and run upstairs. Marion remains rooted to the spot, staring back at the ominous figure. Its breathing is low and raspy. I am here for the children. The breathing gets deeper. I am not leaving without them. The entity's arms crack and it lifts it, holding out in front. Then each finger cracks until it settles on a long finger pointing at Marion. You do not scare me. I am not afraid of you. It screams. I am not afraid of you. The baby cries and the nurseman turns to look towards the crib. Leave her alone. The nurseman looks back at Marion and she steps forward, but she's thrust backwards into the door and collapses to the floor into her stomach. She lifts her head and looks at the figure. Listen, children, no need to fear. Marion is flipped onto her back and she cries out in pain. Marion begins to move towards the nursery as if being pulled. Marion cries out but can't stop. She edges closer to the entity in the doorway. Suddenly someone grabs her hand and begins to pull her back. Marion looks up to see a dishevelled Richard. Richard! A gust of wind begins to blow against them. Listen, children, no need to fear. Of the nursery man should he appear. Richard pulls his hand over Marion's mouth and pulls her around the corner. What are you doing? Shh! We hear a groan. The wind disappears, but the baby is still crying. I need to get Harriet. Richard puts her finger to his lips. Marion shrugs his hand off and stands and looks towards the nursery, just in time to see the nurseryman lifting the baby out of the cot. The door slams shut and the crying stops. No! Marion runs to the nursery door and opens it, but the nurseryman is gone and so is Harriet. Why did you stop me? I could have saved her! We have to be quiet as possible. That thing cannot see. It hunts by sound. Mother, there was no way we could have saved the baby. It was too close to her. Richard hugs Marion. I'm sorry. We need to save the other children. Where are they? Attic. Richard and Marion rush through the attic door and close it behind them. Interior, attic. Richard and Marion emerge in the attic. Children, it is me. You're safe. Who is that? It's all right. He is my son. Amelia stands up, followed by another little boy. Who is he? He he does not talk. You do not know his name? Amelia shakes her head. Marion kneels in front of the little boy. My name is Marion. I'm here to take you home. Can you tell me your name? The little boy tries to speak, but no words will come out. It's all right. You are safe now. The little boy shakes his head. You are going home? Um... Emma? Emma? Are you Arthur? Arthur looks up surprised. Marion smiles. Are you? Arthur nods. Emma is waiting for you. Arthur smiles. We have never seen him smile. Are there any more children? No. There used to be more, but now we are all that's left. He's still here only because he hides in here and he never makes a sound. We hear a threatening scream come from downstairs. All the children huddle together. Mother, we need to hurry. He is coming for us. We must hide. No, you have all hidden long enough. It is time to go home. Mother, how do we get back? 
There is a mirror in the nursery. We need to be quick. When we get downstairs, hold each other's hand. We do not want to leave anyone behind. We hear another scream. Listen, we have to be as quiet as possible. If we are quiet, it cannot find us. Understand? The children nod. Remember, Richard puts his hand to his lips. Shh. Richard leads the way down the stairs. Cut to landing. Richard emerges first, followed by Marion, then the children. They all walk down to the nursery door. Richard puts his ear to the door and listens, then opens it. It is safe. Come quickly. They all gather. Richard sees the mirror on the wall. That was not there before. I found it in the attic. It brought me here and will send us home. Turns to the children. Once through, wait for me on the other side. Do you understand? The children nod. Richard touches the mirror and it ripples. Astounding. M- miss? Yes? Marion turns to see Jonathan pointing at the entity. Its back is towards the nursery. Arthur is stood inches in front of it. Do not move, Arthur. Be very quiet. Arthur looks terrified as the entity begins to move slowly away from the nursery and towards him. It moves with a heavy limp. Each step it takes, its body slumps heavily to one side. The entity passes Arthur and it begins to walk down the stairs. Everyone waits until the footsteps have stopped. Arthur, come quickly. Arthur shakes his head and turns and runs back into the attic. Arthur, no! We suddenly hear a low growl and see the nursery rat is peering around the corner of the stairs. Marion steps backwards slowly and kicks a toy. The nursery rat slides out from around the stairs and begins to walk towards the nursery. Marion slams the door shut. Richard, quickly, put them through. A tremendous bang on the door scares the children. It is all right. Soon you will never see it again. Trust me. Richard lifts Jonathan through the mirror, then a tremendous bang against the door creates a crack above the door and runs across the ceiling. Quickly, Richard. Richard picks up Amelia and puts her through the mirror. I need to go to the attic and get Arthur. Let me. You go through. I need to get him. Richard, go through yourself and protect them. I will be as quick as I can. No. Trust me. I will come back. Marion puts both hands on the door, then closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Listen, children, no need to fear of the nursery man should he appear. Close your eyes and count to ten. Only then you'll be safe again. The banging stops and Marion pulls the door open to an empty landing. Marion turns to Richard. Remember the rhyme. It will protect you. Marion heads out of the nursery. We linger on Richard. Cut to interior attic. Marion emerges in the attic. Arthur? Arthur, are you here? Marion scans the attic. It is all right, Arthur. Come out. Arthur emerges. Marion runs over and hugs him. Never run away again, Arthur. Jonathan and Amelia are safe and I have to get you home. Marion takes Arthur's hand and they exit the attic. Cut to landing. Marion emerges from the attic with Arthur. Marion looks down at him and puts her finger to her lips. Shh. They move as quickly as possible across the landing into the nursery. Come, Arthur. It is time to go home. Marion is about to pick up Arthur and catches the blocks which fall. She is suddenly grabbed from behind and thrust against the wall. Arthur runs to the corner and begins to cry. Marion looks up and sees the entity approaching the corner. Get away from him! The entity turns and looks at Marion and then continues towards Arthur. Leave him alone! Marion forces herself to stand. Look at me! The entity turns and looks at Marion. Keep your eyes closed, Arthur, and do not listen. It will be all right. I promise. The entity is now coming towards Marion. I am not afraid of you. You will not hurt him. Listen, children, no need to fear. Marion is thrust back against the wall. She shrugs it off and gets back up to her feet. Of the nursery man should he appear. Close your eyes. The entity screams at her and she's thrown back against the wall. It grabs her by the throat and pulls her towards it and throws her out of the room. She hits the floor hard, winding herself. Marion coughs and forces herself to stand. She's shaking. Close your eyes and count to ten. Only then you'll be safe again. I am not afraid of you. I am not a child and you will not hurt the children any more. Listen, children, no, no need to fear. Of the nursery man, should he appear. Close your eyes and count to ten. Only then you will be safe again. 
The door slams shut and Marion rushes over and throws it open. There's no sign of the nursery man. Arthur? Arthur stands quickly from behind the dollhouse. Marion rushes over and hugs him. Quickly. Marion puts Arthur through the mirror and passes through herself. Cut to nursery day. Marion emerges and Richard rushes over and hugs her. Arthur is stood with the other children. We need to destroy the mirror. Richard grabs the mirror and runs out of the room. Come, children. Marion grabs Arthur's hand and they all run out of the nursery. Cut to exterior garden. Richard strikes a match and throws it on the mirror, which catches fire immediately. They all stand and watch the mirror burn. Cut to scene 12, exterior Emma's house. Marion stood outside Emma's front door. Her face is bruised. Marion knocks on Emma's door and after a little wait, the door opens and Emma emerges. Miss Kelly, what happened? I will tell you about it sometime. I... Yes? I have someone who would like to meet you. Who? Marion steps aside to reveal a very shy Arthur. Emma's face lights up. Is... Arthur, this is your sister, Emma. Emma holds out her arms to hug Arthur, but he looks scared. Do not be scared, Arthur. I know I look different. It has been a very long time. I missed you dearly. Emma bends down to Arthur's height. He steps forward. It is all right, Arthur. It is Emma. Emma? Emma? Arthur hugs Emma. You are old. Where is Mama and Papa? Sadness comes across Emma's face. I will explain later. Come in. Arthur steps inside the house and looks back at Marion. It is all right, Arthur. You are home now. I... How? Go. Be with him. I will explain another time. Thank you. Emma hugs Marion and walks inside, closing the door behind her. Marion walks to the end of the drive where Richard is waiting. That is truly amazing. Reunited after 80 years. Yes. Remarkable. So, what lies ahead for Marion Kelly? You know, you have a hefty book to write now. Richard and Marion begin to walk away. I do not know about that. What do you mean? You got the proof you were so desperate for? Who is going to believe me if I do write it? I'll be there to back your story. Well, better backing than a converted sceptic. I suppose you are right. Crossfade, Florence's house. We pan across the landing into the nursery room and settle on the mirror on the wall and it begins to crack. We stay on the mirror and the rocking chair rocks backwards into view. It rocks forward, and when it rocks back, the nurseryman is sat in the chair. Cut to black. Credits. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you stuck around for that read. Apologies that uh, I played one or two characters and I'm not an actor. I am the director. But I hope you enjoyed that little uh, look into what the film could have been at the end. Yes. Yeah. And, And it still gives me shivers. I think it would have been such a good ending to have, but... yeah. Logistically, it just wouldn't have. It didn't work out. It was a combination. It was it like was. children, location, effects. Yeah. Because um, you want such good quality, and yeah. you can't do some of those without without money yeah. to, to to make the effects. It properly. feels weird reading that as well because it's been about six years since I've read that, and yeah. it feels weird. But we have been discussing that there may be a Children's Darkwood House 2, mm-hmm. and this ending may see the light of day after all. I think that uh, Children of Darkwood House 2, I nearly forgot Darkwood House 2, needs to be made. Yes, I do. It needs to be made. I do. I think there'll be quite a few cameos as well. Let's hope. Well, certain people obviously can't come back because unfortunately they have passed away, which is sad, but yeah. Well, this has been a lot longer episode than usual, but I hope you have enjoyed it and a little peek into our world with uh, the fabulous Sarah Ellis. I'm going to have to say goodbye now, aren't I? You are, you are. So uh, hopefully until next time, you know, like and subscribe to keep the darkness alive and uh, until next time... Stay safe and stay creepy. Bye.